Wow, the market is falling. We have Bitcoin under 58,000. We have Solana. Ooh, Solana is looking rough, down 12% uh, at about 134. We have Ethereum falling down 10% as well. Let's take a look at what's happening in the market today. We'll take a look at why the market's falling and whether it's going to turn around. It's quite interesting what's happening right now, too. Uh, I'm going to break it down, give you my thoughts on the market. We do have Bitcoin dominance hitting a new high, a new high for this cycle. So we'll take a look at that. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this. Also, if you want to trade crypto, this is something that I think can actually do really well and you can you can do really well uh, trading crypto during this kind of market where we're seeing a nice pullback, honestly, like, you don't want to be going long when we're hitting resistance. You want to be going long when we're hitting support. And then you get that nice, you know, 20% move times whatever leverage you're using without even hitting new highs, right? Uh, that That is beautiful. If you want to try this out, there is a link underneath the video to Marjax. Or if you're doing it somewhere else, I would suggest Marjax. Of course, know what you're doing before you sign up. And... If you've already signed up, you can actually go over to this referral button and you can refer other people that do trade. So that way you can get some commission from them as well. You get a percentage of their fees uh, just in case you ever want to do that with friends or family or something. Of course, make sure they know the risks and everything too, but you can then get a little bit of passive income. But let's take a look at what's happening in the market. Bitcoin down to 57700 it's actually a pretty key level if you look here. And we'll go through some of the, the news that's happening right now in a second. But look at this. We bounced one time right at this level. So it'll be interesting to see. Can we hold 56,500? Otherwise, yeah, we might be looking back at like 54,000, 53,500. When we move up, you have to know that if you're buying in here, that we can always fall down, right? A lot of people are getting worried because alts are down even more. I mean, look at this. Ethereum down 7.7% in the last 24 hours now. That's what's showing on Marjax. Uh, hitting new recent lows. Like we, we have not been at this level since February. Yeah, February. It's been a long time. I mean, just recently, we were up at 4,100. You look at Solana as well. Casp, uh, everything's down today. But Solana down, tw it's at 12%. Now it's saying 5% up there. But you can see pretty close to some support. It's still actually holding up better on the chart than Ethereum, it looks like. But yeah, maybe a little bit more downside if we fall down to 120 or so. But yeah, really interesting here with everything falling down. And as you can see here, there are a lot of liquidations over the last one hour, $118 million worth of longs liquidated. Look at Bitcoin dominance. It actually just hit today a new high. The last time we were around this level, April... 13, 2024. I know Benjamin Cohen's just, just dying to make one of those Bitcoin dominance videos. But I have said on the channel, I'm very Bitcoin heavy this whole cycle. Like I, I almost to a fault. I've been very Bitcoin heavy this entire time. And it's done quite well. Now we are at a bit of resistance. Obviously, we, we got rejected here before. And we also held held 57% as support here. Now I know Benjamin Cohen's saying 60%. And then we can go into an alt market. Uh, or we can go into an alt season, maybe because there's some support there, some resistance here. I think, you know, after 57%, 60% is another important level. Keep in mind, though, if we move up to 60%, there's going to be blood in the altcoin market. That's going to be where you really, where I'll really look at diving maybe a little bit heavier into altcoins, because right now, like I've said before, 80% of my portfolio is in Bitcoin. On days like this, it's probably even higher than that. But let's take a look at what is happening and whether we should be worried. Miles DeShooter says, reasons why crypto is crashing. Trump presidency odds are decreasing. He made some remarks that offended a lot of people recently, and I'm not trying to get political. I'm not telling you guys to get political, but he commented on uh, Harris's uh, ethnicity saying that she's going back and forth between ethnicities for votes or something like that when it suits her, which not a good look. Um, recession fears. A lot of people are worried about recession after the jobs number. Stock market correction. Yen unwind. Geopolitical tensions uh, in the Middle East. Jump unwinding positions. We'll talk about that in a second. 
Gox just distributions, recent pump trapped fresh longs, altcoin dispersion. This is the perfect storm. And yeah, the jump capital is something that's new. It looks like they're just dumping a bunch of Ethereum. Millions, millions, uh, pretty much an hour here. You can see 12 hours ago, 13 hours ago, 14, 14, 15, 16, just consistently depositing into Binance. And it looks like they're just dumping Ethereum, which is one of the reasons why Ethereum is probably down even more today compared to other cryptocurrencies. And they are one of the bigger players in this space, to be clear. Uh, also, something that he didn't even mention, Warren Buffett now holds $277 billion in cash and has been selling selling stocks like never before. I saw somewhere, I think he sold around half his Apple position. I could be wrong on that, but yeah, they just hold a lot of cash. And we've talked about it in the last couple of videos. Keep in mind, Miles the Shooter talking about all these reasons why crypto is crashing. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago. When we were all super bullish, he was saying, in my six years in crypto, this is one of the most bullish setups I've ever seen. In, in hindsight, it's going to seem so obvious. Now, I'm not giving him a hard time because honestly, all these things are still here, right? Let's go through some of them. The German government run out of Bitcoin to sell. If you remember at the beginning of last month, one month ago, actually, exactly on this date, we had uh, Bitcoin crashing down to 53.5. But that ended. The Bitcoin ETF inflows remain strong. Now they're kind of back to just sideways a bit with the ETH ETFs that kind of threw off the Bitcoin ETF inflows. But BlackRock's still buying. U.S. presidential election. Trump at a 70% chance of winning. Now he's at like 54%. So still likely to win at this point. But it's definitely fallen down. Keep in mind, since this time, Joe Biden has completely lost. Uh, completely gone out of the race altogether. And there's $34 million bet on him that he was going to be president, it looked like. Uh, Trump, speaking at 2024, Bitcoin 2024, he spoke and I think it was quite bullish. Same thing with JFK Jr. Uh, or RFK, RFK Jr. Uh, FTX is repaying $16 billion to creditors. That's still going to happen. Global liquidity is ticking up. Even the Fed talked about lowering rates just last week. It looks like now the markets are pricing in even more rates. Spot ETFs, ETFs went live. Now we're going through a lot of the dumping phase where we're just seeing Grayscale continuously drop, uh, you know, like 50 to 100 million, it seems like every day. Goldman Sachs launching three tokenization product uh, projects. Keep in mind, too, uh, there are RIAs now that are allowed to push or you know, uh, advisors are allowed to push and companies like Goldman Sachs allowed to push these Bitcoin ETFs now that's come out over the last few days. Rate cuts, as we said, now the market's pricing in most likely five rate cuts this year and the markets are forward looking, you know, over the coming months, you'll likely see the market price in these tailwinds. So that's that's uh, the 10th catalyst there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just so many catalysts that are happening, but, you know, the market's still falling for all these reasons we say before. These catalysts are great over the long term and could be really big, but if someone goes and dumps a billion dollars over the weekend, it's still going to force the price down. As I said yesterday, though, the big players like this. The big players do force liquidations because, again, just really simply... If some whale can sell, let's say they sell uh, a big fat stack of Bitcoin at $60,000 and they know if they sell that, someone will be liquidated and then the price will go down to $58,000 or $59,000 and they can buy back at 58 when they just sold at 60 and a lot of this information is very uh, visible. You can go find it. So they can sell at 60, buy back at 58. Why wouldn't they do that? I mean, a lot of them do that just to manipulate, to uh, cause liquidations, to be able to buy and stack even more. And while the big players want you to buy Bitcoin through their ETFs, they want to do it gradually so they don't send up the price too quickly. So yes, they're going to continue to allow this to happen. There's going to continue to be manipulation. Some people will be liquidated. A lot of people will lose money in crypto because they make irrational, emotional decisions in moments like this. If you're thinking about this logically, you would want to buy right now because we are in a dip. I mean, even, even if you're just looking at this, obviously there's a key level here around 125 on Solana, but let's take a look at this too. Solana, uptrend still. If you look at the two previous tops, higher high, 
and higher lows. Like that's still bullish. If you look at Bitcoin, there's still a bull flag forming. Uh, honestly, I think we're in a pretty good situation. There's going to be some liquidations. There's going to be some fear. I like when there's fear because that tells me that's probably some form of manipulation that people are trying to buy more before we head up further. I do not think the market's done. Uh, I, I know I talk about in the title or the thumbnail, like this is the final drop, the final crash. And I'm saying that because Alex Becker yesterday, and I think there's some um, some level of truth to this, said that this could be the final drop before a parabolic run. And I think, yeah, people do need to be shaken out before you move back up. That's just how it always works. And in general, the summers are pretty rough, pretty boring, pretty choppy. That's exactly what's happening now. Like this has been a very boring summer and typically the falls are better. Again, when you look at all the catalysts, Fed lowering rates, liquidity going up, elections, uh, the fact that stocks have taken a 10 to 15% haircut, which is natural, which is good for the markets to flush out the people that are too greedy and then also to just kind of reset for the next run. I think this is all bullish. And then we can continue moving up. Now, I would be careful, right? Uh, I'd be careful about doing anything too stupid, like either selling everything. And of course, if you need the money, you should sell. Like if you invested when you need the money in a couple months, you should not be in this market. But making irrational decisions, selling or going extremely long when you don't have the capability to actually withstand the volatility. Also, like just not paying attention to this market, I think would be a mistake. Now you want to be paying attention, be dialed in because eventually we will turn and we will probably go into a parabolic run. I mean, even if you're a manipulator, you want this to happen. So that way you can dump your bags on people when we're at a hundred or 90,000 or 120,000 or whatever it is. Like that is what the whales want. And that's typically what the whales get. They get what they want because they push this market. So it makes sense for us to have a parabolic run after everyone feels like they're just being down and out of the market. The fall continues on. Everyone gets ultra bullish and then we eventually dump, which is why I think it is important to take profits. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video. Let me know if you think this is the last crash and we do go parabolic. Thank you so much. Say hi to Connor. Kenny. Guys, guys, if you want some much better content we're not talking about better ta or better fundamental analysis just 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 a much better person a cooler accent a much cooler person much cooler accent. worse mustache and much a worse mustache too. yeah then come and join my channel there's a link in the description <laughs> there's no link but you can look up connor kenny <laughs> but yeah thank you so much for watching let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video again you can check out the link underneath the video to marjax where you can start trading again this is the time where i do like you know, I do like putting trades on. Of course, there's more risk when we are trying to catch a falling knife. Like there's more initial risk, but it's a better time generally to be going long or to be buying in general, right? Would you rather buy when we're at all time highs or going long when we're at all time highs and we're hitting resistance and we could dump 40% or would you rather, you know, go long when we're already down 20% when everyone feels like we're just stuck in a rut? right before rate cuts, right before liquidity, before everything takes off. Let me know your thoughts. So again, not promising anything. I am totally okay if we go down further because I've set everything up to where I can withstand the volatility. That's the key. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you all in the next one.